Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to another installment of EZ with me, CZ. Today I'm sharing a fun technique where you ink up a bunch of different colors onto a cling stamp and create a beautiful array of color. Let's take a look at the products I'm using today. Got this awesome cling stamp, this botanical split, and I love that it pulls apart so you can isolate whatever part you want to use. I've got some Distress Oxides here in a rainbow order. I've got a little bit of cardstock, some Nina Solar White Classic Crest, and a Welcome Word and Shadow Die. I'm also going to be using a sub greeting from the Welcoming Stamp Set. So those are the basics. Of course, I'll use a few other things as we go, but let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is take my insert pad out of my Misty, and I just wanted to show you this. I always tape my pad into the base of the Misty just so that pad never slips. If you ever have slippage, just stick a piece of tape in there. And now I'll peel off the part of the cling that I want to use and just sort of find the perfect position for it. This is how I like to use these red rubber cling stamps. I like to put them inside the Misty, and then I'm going to line up my cardstock over the area that I want to stamp on. So I'm kind of tweaking this a little because I want it to go from corner to corner. And once I get it positioned, then I'm going to grab some low tack tape. This is easy C tape. And I'll take a piece and pop it onto the cardstock in a couple strategic locations. And then I can just pick it up with the Misty door and get ready for stamping. I'm going to use my Tim Holtz Mini Distress Blenders, and I've actually got the domed foams on here. Loading up my first color, which is Kitsch Flamingo, and I'm blending and potching, and by potching I just mean pouncing, basically pressing the ink into the first area of the stamp. I'm gonna get a nice coating and then bring the misty door down, and now I essentially press my paper into the stamp. And because the paper has been taped into place, it's not going to move, so I can keep moving ahead with this process. I'm putting a little more color down for the pink because I just kind of wanted to bump it up a little and pressing it down. I'm not going to clean off the stamp. Instead, I'm going to move on to color two, which is spiced marmalade. Again, working in rainbow order, potching it down kind of going over where some of the pink was as well. The nice thing about this is it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to clean off your stamp in between because you want to try to create that transitional blend between the two colors. Isn't that cool? I'm going to come back and add a bit more of the Kitsch Flamingo just to pump it up again in the area where the orange and the pink meet. And repeat. Mustard Seed is the next color. Same process, popping it down, potching it down, pressing it into that stamp, giving that a good press. And on this one, I didn't quite get enough ink in there. You can kind of see where I missed, so coming back at it. You just can keep building up color, well, as long as you want until it gets the look that you are trying to achieve. For the final color, I'm coming in with Twisted Citron. Same process, potching it onto the stamp, getting that nice and inky, and then I'll go ahead and add it to the paper. And when I'm done, I have this lovely transition of color. I think that is so fun, right? Look at that. I'm gonna set this aside to let that oxide ink dry and move on to the next step. I brought you over here to my Gemini Junior for die cutting because I wanted to show you the cool little board that I keep my machine on. It's the rotating design board from Totally Tiffany. I love it because when I feed this through in my little tight space, all I have to do is rotate, please ignore the ding, is rotate and out it comes and I no longer have to pick up that heavy machine to die cut in that little tight space. Pop that off, here's another, here's another pro tip. Sometimes I do this, I whack it down and pop out my die. Be careful though, because you, you can lose your dies that way. All right, I'm cutting out a few more, and here I also have a shadow layer in some Simon Says Stamp Fog, which I thought would look really nice and sort of neutral, but allow this welcome to pop off of this particular card. I'm gonna use Craft Bond Spray Adhesive to glue my elements together here for the greeting title. I do this in a little box. I actually just use the box that my Simon stuff comes in sometimes. 
I spray it though away from my camera because the, I don't want it to float up and coat the, uh, <laughs> coat the iPhone with which I film. But once I have that down, I just layer it in. There are two stacks together, and then I'll just repeat it for a third stack just to give me that really nice dimension on the greeting. Love it. Wiggling it together and just pressing down to make sure it's all adhered. And once that's adhered, I'll add the spray glue to the back of that and mount this on the shadow layer. I love it, so nice. It's so easy to create these really substantial greetings with just a few layers of cardstock. Ah, I love it. Press that down and now we are ready to move on to the next step. I'm gonna score my card base. This will be a USA2 and it will be a horizontal card. So that will be five and a half inches wide by four and a quarter inches tall. And the next thing I'm going to do is adhere this panel right onto the card base because I didn't want to trim this down. I love the edge to edge and I love the size. So I'm taking my Simon Dot Runner. I'm going to coat the back. I love this Dot Runner because it has the Simon color. You can actually see where you're putting it, which is pretty cool. And don't be shy. Layer that down, my card making friends, because you don't want that panel to move. And I like to use my score buddy for this step. I press the card base into the corner then line up the panel into the corner, and just like that, you have a perfectly lined up panel on a card base, and it adds a little substantialness to the whole thing. I've got thin foam squares that I will be popping up the greeting with, but I also wanted to do the sub-greeting of To the Neighborhood, so I grabbed that Simon Fog Gray, inked up the stamps with a little clear Simon embossing ink, and sprinkled on my white fine detail powder, I went ahead and heat set this off camera for some reason I wasn't filming. And once I had this heat set, I grabbed the coordinating dies, taped those into place, and ran those through my die cut machine. So I'll take my Barely Art Glue. I've already taken the backers off of the little foam squares. And I do this so that I have a little bit of wiggle time because foam squares really stick where you put them. But if you have a little glue, it gives you just a little bit of play time to wiggle bring in my T-square to make sure that the baseline is all lined up, press that down, and then I'll do the same thing on the die cut subgreeting that says to the neighborhood. Isn't that cute? I just think it has a really soft, welcoming look, and well, you know, if you're welcoming neighbors to the neighborhood, yeah, I, I kind of nail on this one. But I love the look, and I thought, does it need shine? And is that ever really a question? Of course it does. So, Grabbed some assorted moonshine sequins, placed five of them around in two different sizes because five is a magic number, and we'll go ahead and add them down. So trying to wait for the boop. Yeah, it's kind of hard with the really tiny ones, but a little dab of glue and place. Boop. And also the other side of this crystal katana tool, you can just kind of wiggle and press it down and even it out. So if you ever wonder what that's for, that, that's what I use it for. Boop, placing it down and wiggling. Oh, so pretty. And sequin number four, which did not want to come up and go down. Sometimes that happens. It, it's humid here where I live right now in the upper Midwest. And sometimes those sequins, well, they just want to stick. But that is the finished card project. I love how this turned out. This technique is so fun to try because every time you do it, it's gonna look a little different. So by all means, give it a try. Thanks so much for watching today. We would love to have you become a subscriber to the Simon Says Stamp YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the bell so you don't miss the next time we post.